Before we get started on today's video, I want to take a quick minute to let you know that today's video sponsor, PCBWay, is currently offering a sale for the month of September on all of their TPU 3D prints. Right now, you can get up to 36% off on all TPU prints over 20 grams, and the heavier that you print, the bigger the discount. If it's over 64 grams, you can save up to 80% off your total purchase price. This sale runs until the end of September, so hop online to PCBWay.com, upload your design, get a free instant quote, and see how much you could save on your next project. And thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's jump into the fun. All right, we have finally got some shipping supplies back in stock, which means it's time to fix up our shipping station. And then we've got some orders to get packed up for Amazon. Let's just jump right into it. Unfortunately for you guys, it's nothing super exciting in here. Just some 10 by 16 and a half inch bubble mailers and a couple bottles of CA glue to assemble the dumbbells together. I guess for me, the more exciting part is I finally have a box big enough to send a fairly good sized shipment to Amazon. I pretty much got rid of all the boxes that I had stored in my other garage because it was starting to get a little bit ridiculous. So. This will be a good sized box to get a fair amount of those dumbbells sent off and into Amazon's warehouse. So like I may have mentioned in one of the previous videos, this section here is pretty much reserved for the 10 and a half by 16 bubble mailers if the 10 by six bubble mailers can stay up and not fall down. I'm hoping these will just kind of sit there once we get the, the larger ones in place. This should be pretty much perfect for the order that I just got in. These guys are pretty much the only thing I like to use to send out the dumbbells. And of course they're not gonna sit up straight. Maybe once I get the other half of them in here. All right, I mean, it's not perfect, but I guess it's better than it was, maybe? Maybe? Yeah, I didn't think that was gonna work either. Well, we've got 40 of the 10 and a half by 16 bubble mailers, a fair amount of the 10 by six mailers for push sticks and sander mounts. And then of course those little ones is what I used for all of the cookie cutters. I don't really use those a whole lot right now unless I get a sale for the cookie cutters. Unfortunately, those haven't really picked back up this season. Uh, nor do I really have a whole lot of them to sell at this point, but I do still have some of the four by eight bubble mailers in case I get a sale of something smaller. But the stuff that I primarily use is the 10 by six. I'm out of the nine by six by four boxes, so I need to get an order placed for those. And then of course I've got the 10 and a half by 16 bubble mailers, which is what I primarily use for the dumbbell business card holders or double orders of any of the other stuff that I sell like the Santa mounts. So I think this will do for now. And then as far as the CA glue, I've ordered another batch of the Sciafix instant adhesive. This is the medium general purpose adhesive and basically all this is is a fancy word for super glue, but you can use something like the Adhesive Guru Activator. Uh, Sciafix also offers an activator with their glue. I've just found that buying the Adhesive Guru Activator is a little bit more cost efficient, especially when you bundle it with the Adhesive Guru CA glue, but I do like what you get out of the medium viscosity Sciafix glue. It's just a little bit more less viscous, so it's it flows a little bit better and helps me assemble the dumbbells and some of the other parts that I may need to assemble with the CA glue. With that said, I suppose you could just go to the dollar store or Home Depot, Lowe's, any home center and pick up any good old super glue and it probably would work just the same, but I've had the best luck using the medium viscosity of the Sciafix brand. I do have links down in the description below if you wanna pick up some of it for yourself. It works with PETG, PLA, I've used it with ABS. Uh, I think those are the only three filaments that I've tried it on, but as far as those three particular filaments go, CA glue definitely is the easiest thing that I've found to get your products to adhere together. So they end up sending a couple extra caps, I guess in case you lose some. They do send these little applicators with them that have a super fine tip, which I don't end up using. The only thing I really end up using is the bottle itself. It's got a fairly tiny hole there at the top, which seems to work out perfect. I give four or five drops to each of the dumbbell ends and then I can insert the dumbbell rod inside of there. So I ended up ordering two bottles. I think it was $15 for these two bottles. If you order any of the bundles with some of the activator spray, it ends up being a little bit more. I haven't purchased any of the Sciafix with 
the activator spray in quite some time, but I do know you can get a bottle pretty much this size with the activator for about 11 or $12. And if you buy the double packs, it comes in around 19 or $20 from the last time I bought it anyways. Uh, again, links down in the description below if you wanna pick up some for yourself. But yeah, again, the Adhesive Guru bundle is probably your best bang for the buck. If you don't need to pick out the viscosity of it, it comes more of a medium thick, whereas this is more of a medium, so it flows a little bit better into smaller crevices. But again, I do keep the activator around just in case I need something to activate in a couple seconds. You can use the super glue without it, and that's what I do with the dumbbell ends. If I want something pretty much instantly within three to five seconds, I'll put the glue on whatever part that I want it on and then spray the activator on the mating part. And again, within three, five, sometimes 10 seconds, depending on the material you're using, the glue is pretty much solid and activated. So you don't have any sort of movement afterwards. So this is usually my go-to, the Sia Fixed. Again, Adhesive Guru has been my go-to for the activator. A little bit backwards, but you know, that's just what I've found to work for me. So that's what we're rolling with today. I do like to try to keep this stuff on hand as best as I can. So I'm running pretty low. This bottle's gotten pretty much down to about a quarter of a bottle. So the sooner that I order this stuff in, the less time that I have to wait between assembling more of the dumbbells. So this little duck, for whatever reason, I, don't, I still don't know where this came from. Maybe one of the printers that I got, I'm thinking the FL Sun, but I'm still not 100% sure. I don't know why it's still here, honestly. Anyway, uh, we've got more CA glue in stock, which means it's time to finish cleaning up this shipping station and then we can get to assembling more dumbbells. All right, I think with the amount of dumbbells that we have currently collected inside of these boxes up here, especially with the ones we've got down in that box there, and the dumbbell rods we just finished printing out a couple days ago. We've got plenty to get another batch sent on to Amazon. So I'm gonna get these loaded up onto the table and then we can get on our way, getting these assembled, packed up, and ready to send out to Amazon. So I don't really have a plan for this stuff as far as how I'm actually gonna store it because well, I've used all my spare boxes for the A1 minis with the farm loop system. So I think to start, I'll just set each box on the floor. How I usually like to do this dumbbell sorting system is I'll get a matching pair for each side. So let's see if I can do this in one shot. Hey, we did it. So I'll get a right and a left side, just like that. And I'll start stacking these up. So when it comes time to assemble them, it makes it a little bit easier. So I don't have to go digging through the box each time. I can just pull a stack, assemble the dumbbells together, and then set them off to the side somewhere. Usually in one of those little clear plastic containers that I've been using for the farm loop system, but that doesn't always work out the way you plan when you use your spare boxes for the farm loop system. Good news is we've got a big empty box that we just got in from Amazon that I can probably stack them all in. Bad news is I have to put all of the finished products inside of this box too. So it's gonna mean putting them in the box and then pulling them out of the box. But I suppose that's the best possible solution for what I've got going on right now. So gonna get all these dumbbells assembled, stacked into this box and then pulled out of this box, put into bubble bags and labeled and then put back into this box. First things first though, getting these guys all laid out and then getting some dumbbell rods set up so I can kind of make this process go a little bit quicker. All right, so I think I've got a fair amount of sets laid out here. So I'm gonna start getting the dumbbell rods laid out and we can start getting these things assembled and put into the box so we can get this thing kind of rolling. Honestly, I'm not sure how many of these dumbbells I can actually fit into this size box, but what I do know is this is the only box that I have that's big enough to send stuff in right now, so it's the only one I'm gonna be packing stuff up into. What I can do to speed up some of the process is 
I know how these dumbbells go into here. Kind of rolls up uh, something like that. So what I can do is apply the risk of suffocation label to the outside of this just past where the sticky label is because I like to apply some sort of extra adhesive to the spot where this adhesion label sticky part goes down. Just in case it wants to come loose, it's got some sort of extra thing sticking it together. So what I'm gonna do is apply a risk of suffocation label probably about an inch down from this top part here on every single one of these bags. That way, when it comes time to pack all the dumbbells up, all I'm gonna have to do is apply the FBA label to every single one of these once they're packed up anyways. Should make it go a little bit quicker is what I'm hoping. It's something I've done in the past. I don't do it every time, but if I think of it before I go to pack stuff up, it's definitely quicker than applying a label to each of them and then moving them off to the side and then applying a label again. Although I guess I'm still applying a label and then moving it off to the side and then applying a label again. In my head, it's quicker doing it this way. All right, for now we're gonna start with what I've got stacked up right here. Obviously, I'm gonna send out more dumbbells than what I have packages for here, but I ran out of labels, so I figure best course of action is to run through what I've got stacked up here. If I don't have enough dumbbells, make some more dumbbells, and then we can print out some more labels. I'm also gonna need to print out some more FBA labels, so I can do that at the same time that I print out more of the warning labels. Gonna go ahead and get some of these bags packed up with what we've got in front of us, and then we can go ahead and start getting some of the FBA labels applied to each of our products. All right, so I've managed to fill half of this box with 24 of the dumbbell business card holders, which means if my math is correct or my measurements are correct, I can fit 48 total business card holders in this single box, which means I need to print out another 50 or so of the FBA labels and another 50 or so of the Amazon warning labels. So we're gonna hop over there, print those out, and I'm gonna finish getting the rest of these things packed up Obviously, I've got some more bags to get labeled up as well. So we'll pop back over here when, uh, when we're a little bit further along. All right, I've got 24 more of these to get assembled and packaged up. We'll bring it back when it's time to put them into the box and finish up this shipment. Definitely assembled and packed up into these bubble bags more than I actually need to send off to Amazon in this box, but I figure it doesn't hurt to have some extras to send off to Etsy because they're all gonna have to go into these bags for Etsy anyways. The only thing Etsy doesn't really require is this warning label, but Again, I figure it can't hurt. All that's left to do now is get some of these FBA labels applied to each of these packages, get everything packed up into the box, get some actual shipping labels applied for UPS, and then this thing can get dropped off at Staples to head off to Amazon in the next coming days. Might as well get to it. All right, 48 dumbbells assembled, packed, and ready to go in this box to Amazon. This should hold me over for a little while, seeing as I sent 60 of them about a week ago, at least at the time of filming this video. And the good news is we've got about 10, 12 of them left over here. I haven't actually done a count, but I'm just taking a wild guess that are ready to go to Etsy if need be, or, you know, stack them up, wait to use them for Amazon for you know, the next shipment around. We've also got probably another 15 or 20 of them that I can assemble down here. These are starting to run low because again, we used all of the 50, basically all of the 50 that we just printed out 
of the dumbbell rods. But I do have another 30 of those dumbbell rods printing out now on the P1P. And we've also got 36 sets of the dumbbell ends that are currently being worked on on both of these A1 minis. I think we're four loops into the six loops that we sent off. So making good progress over here as well. These can get packed up into any old bin and be stored away for shipping on Etsy. As for the rest of the items in this box, this can get closed up, taped up. I can peel some of my, uh, my, my shipping labels off. And this thing can get wrapped up, taped up, and we can take a measurement of it, get some weight on it. And I can get the UPS label and the FBA label all set up in Amazon. So let's pop on over there. We'll get that done. And then this should wrap up this box. And as for this one, I think that's where we're gonna wrap it up. If you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows that you enjoyed this type of content. And if you wanna see more like it, go ahead and smash that subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on the next upload. And if you wanna continue on on watching my journey in the 3D print farm, I've got another video queued up for you right here. I will see you all in the next video, folks. Take care.